Synthetic biology is turning to the living kingdoms for its materials library. We no longer have to rely on polluting petrochemicals. Instead, we can pick a feature from an existing organism. We extract a cell, then identify the chromosome that contains the DNA code we need. The DNA is grouped into genes that encode the proteins. Which produce the feature we're looking for. We copy these genes and using a plasmid, we insert them into a biological chassis, either an existing bacteria or a synthetic cell, and allow this new, now synthetic organism to clone itself. All of these bacteria now carry our simple feature. Using the same process, we could build in more functions to invent novel materials, products and tools. But as we add more and more features, the complexity increases. How can we control all of the unknowns? We do this to different degrees. The simplest is by hacking existing bacteria by inserting standardized DNA components, or by genetically engineering whole systems to introduce into the genome of our bacteria. Or we can build minimal genomes from the bottom up without all of the surplus information. Entirely synthetic cells are possible too, designed and grown in the lab. Some say they're safer, since they're simpler and more predictable. One day we'll be able to engineer more complex synthetic organisms too, made up of many kinds of cells with different roles. But how will we classify what is natural or unnatural when life is built from scratch? The tree of life is always changing, ever since we first created it. Now we're adding to the living kingdoms for the first time. But these synthetic organisms are no different to other life forms, except that we invented them. So we'll have to insert an extra branch into the tree of life. The synthetic kingdom is part of our new nature.